that was kind of my mentality where if he was going to do something like that to me, then bye, you know, mm. and not having any knowledge of what that actually meant, you know, I mean, tearing two lives apart is gut wrenching and painful. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Couples Connect. We have some special guests with us today. We are talking with Unrelenting Pursuit, Brad and Lisa. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Yeah, Thank great. you so yeah, much for we're having us. Honored to be on. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah, the honor is ours, definitely. Yeah. So we love you guys' content. But I saw that you guys have a very interesting story, which we're going to dive into, talking mm, about yeah. going through an affair and a divorce. Uh, and how you guys were able to come out of that strong. So we went through the entire divorce process. So we didn't actually Almost, yeah. get divorced. When when I say that we were one hour away from divorce, it, oh, it's wow. a actual literal thing. It, it, when Brad called me and said, maybe we can More. work things out. One hour later, the attorney said, uh -huh. the, the papers are ready. So it was just like, so yeah, anyway, <clears throat> all that to you tell the story. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know where to start. I'll try to figure out where to start. But the the big thing is I want you guys to know right now is like there's a lot of stuff that I don't um there's like timelines. My timelines are all messed up. So she's got the timelines like down. Vault in here. But yeah, <laughs> my timeline is all messed up. But um I man, I would say it started like way before I did anything, but I don't feel I look back now and I feel that I didn't have the the rooted relationship I should have with with God. Like I didn't, I was just kind of checking the box and you know, maybe a little more than checking the box, but not really striving to have that, that grounded, rooted relationship with God and definitely wasn't my full priority. But anyway, so I, I travel a lot for work and um, I was traveling and it just kind of, like, it's like, so I, I put it like, I'm sorry, I'm kind of bumbling around trying to figure out exactly how to say this. I know I bumble a lot, <laughs> but um, it's kind of like, I, I equate it to kind of like eating um, a buffet, right? Like if you're just, you're not going to sit down and eat the whole buffet. You're not going to say, I'm going to eat this whole thing. I'm going to eat this whole, uh, I don't know, turkey, whatever. Um, you're just going to eat a bite of it and then another bite and then another bite. And then before you know it, you have eaten the whole thing, um, it, it, along those lines. So I think that one day you don't just wake up one day and go, I'm going to step out on my wife, um, keep it a secret, not know what's going to happen and just live a double life. Like you're, you don't wake up doing that. You know, it's a gradual, gradual steps that get you there. And, um, so I think that's, that's kind of where it started. It just like not being rooted and grounded in the word of God, not making that a part of my, my relationship, um, starting to like, like slack off, I would say in a lot of areas in my life and just focused on work only, you know, not really focused on my family, not doing any of this. And then when I was being deployed, I was of course away from my, my wife and kids. And then, um, like I would go out and go get a beer with a few of the guys. And then that turned into uh, more than one, you know, more than staying out just a little bit. Now I'm staying out late and then staying out later to where now girls are noticing me. Right. And that's like, and I think, and we've talked about this a little bit on one of our episodes where I think a lot of this stuff is rooted in pride, you know, like, especially for males, it's like, Hey, they noticed me. What? Like we had been married, 10 years. 10 years at this point. Um, you know, like what other people notice me, other, you know, women notice me, this is crazy. And so then it just kind of kept going from there. And I kept like putting my guard down and kept compromising my spiritual well being, compromising my physical well being, and just giving into anything. And um, this is all while I was deployed. And then I'd, I'd come back home um, here in the United States, like with what I do. So I come back home. And I just kept up the facade that nothing was, was happening. And then I'd go back out for work and then I'd start doing everything again. And so it was, it was a weird time in my life, um, in our lives for sure. But going through it, um, I thought like this was, 
you know, I, I just walked away from my faith and walked away from my family and then hit it and thought it was like, again, it's that pride thing. I think it really hits on that where, you know, it's like, look what I'm doing. Look, you know, kind of deal. Um, and then God reveals all, you know, Truth. truths. Right. And so yeah. it was revealed and I, came home to not being able to go home. Um, my stuff, she had rightfully so like, I don't blame her for any we, of this. I first always of all. laugh. Cause when he first told me this, I was like, you realize there was like a five week period of time before this happened. <laughs> I don't feel like it was, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like it was like, boom, 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 boom. Right. But anyway, all my stuff was in a shed moved out of the house. I lived with, um, friends of mine that were, you know, out that I worked with and, I just kind of wrote it off then. Like, it was like, okay, well, this is over. And um, I just kept doing everything I wanted to do. Just kept kept on. And I mean, I, to the point where I like, didn't really talk to my family, didn't talk to anyone that was going to talk any sense into me. I didn't want to hear any of that. Um, I barely talked to Lisa. Um, I barely saw the kids. And, uh, it was just kind of like, I, I just was like, okay, we're getting a divorce. She found out. So I just need to move on. And God wasn't even in the picture for me. It was just, it was just moving on. That was it. It was. And, and really, uh, in what was going on and it's so funny because our stories are clearly, they're so connected, but this all kind of happened very separately. So it's, it's yeah. almost like we have these. Um, two separate stories that end up intersecting yeah. um, by a miracle. Uh, but when I did find out about the affair, I really, we had a good marriage. And so that's mm -hmm. why I always emphasize to people, a lot of, a lot of people who think they face an affair or they, or they face divorce, they think, Oh, well, what was wrong in their marriage? What was, what was it that was, mm. you know, this person was doing or that person was doing. We, we actually had a very good marriage. Looking yeah. back, we can always see things that we should have improved on or done differently. Mm. Uh, but the foundation of a good marriage was there and, and we genuinely loved each other. Yep. And so if you, before this happened, if you had told me like, what would you do? if your husband was going to have an affair and I would have said, don't let the good Lord hit you with where he split you. I mean, like, because that was, I, I, I don't need a man, you know? Yeah. I mean, that was, that was kind of my mentality where if he was going to do something like that to me, then bye, you know, mm. and not having any knowledge of what that actually meant, you know, I mean, tearing two lives apart is, gut-wrenching and painful and you know going through a divorce is gut-wrenching and painful and there's so meant so much pain one way or the other when it comes to um an affair and when it comes to yeah. um either deciding to reconcile or deciding to get a divorce and so um that's kind of how i felt about it but it was so weird i mean when when i say that jesus gave me a supernatural love for my husband yeah. during that time it, it was absolutely that it was like I could feel this small glimpse of how much Jesus loved my husband mm -hmm. in the middle of this completely broken place. And it helped me, even though I just wanted to punch him to wake him up. You know, it, <laughs> it, I did. It was just, there were so many things that happened along that way where I was just like, wake up. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? You know, cause you could not, even though I told him many times, I really don't think he even remembers how many times mm -hmm. I was like, this is in your court. This is the, whatever, you know, you can stop this divorce process. You can stop doing these things. We can try to work things out. And it was just like, he couldn't see it. He couldn't yeah. hear it. And so I just prayed and I prayed as I have probably never prayed before. And, you know, there's a scripture that talks about Jesus being close to the brokenhearted. And it, that was how he held me during that time. It was just walking me through and holding me and giving me little glimpses to the next stage, to the next stage, to the next stage as I went along. And it was this huge surrendering process, right? Because I'm a fixer. So it's like, oh, well, there's a problem. So let's fix it. And it was almost like God had to strip me down and to say like, there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could say. I had done everything I possibly could do. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing left. And I just had to just surrender my future. And that is scary. 
you know, to say like, I had this idea of my future. I had this idea of what my life was supposed to be like. And now it's, it's not there anymore yeah. and there's nothing I can do. And so when I surrendered Brad, just, just, okay, God, he's yours. And I really just took my fingers off of the situation. So when people ask us for this mirror, you know, this miracle way of like getting your marriage back or doing, it's like, well, surrender. <laughs> just, yeah. That doesn't mean you're going to get your marriage yeah. back, but I do know that, that Jesus will take you through. Um, even when you're in the midst of those things, whatever your outcome mm -hmm. looks like. So our journey, even though it was happening at the same time, totally is, separate. is very, I mean, very different. Yeah. I mean, I just was praying and, and as he's doing all these things, I was, God was doing work in me, which I was kind of was mad about because I was just like, leave me alone. Like, uh, I don't need you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need you to work on me. Like, clearly, he's yeah. the problem. Go work on him. <laughs> yep. And so that's kind of just this whole thing of God teaching me that I had to forgive him even when he had not asked for forgiveness. I had to surrender. I had to do all of these things. And it just did not seem fair in the middle of all this stuff because I just felt like, you know, well, aren't you going to do something to him? He's just yeah. living the high life over there doing whatever he wants. And yeah. I'm having to be so responsible over here and take care of the, the home and the kids and, you know, trying to figure out my life. And so it just, God, when, when he gets involved and you really surrender your life to him, I mean, you recognize how much you need him because yeah. I was just like, he had to do some work in me. He had to do some work in Brad and apparently he had to do it separately. <laughs> so that's where we were, which, yeah. Brings us to kind of that point in your story where. Are we going over the whole question? I have some yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Sorry. Please. Yeah. It's really hard to summarize all of this in a very yeah, short period of time. Great. This is because I think this is like our first conversation with another couple mm -hmm. who has experienced infidelity. It's, you know, it's not something that people talk about often. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, I have questions. So, yeah. <laughs> bring it, girl. <laughs> so, and let, let me just say that. Yeah. You guys are brave for telling your story. And I think that it's powerful and that it will help a lot of other couples. Because like she oh, said, I hope. we talk about uh -huh, this. So, uh -huh. yeah. and I think the, the, you know, the Bible talks about how we overcome by the words of our testimony. So mm -hmm. just by you guys talking about this is going to free a lot of marriages, you know? Yeah. So that's our, that's, that's our, our prayer. prayer. That is yeah. our prayer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we found in ourselves telling our story, how healing it has been. The first time we shared our story, um, in, together, together I mean, I, I just, I was crying. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, because just saying some of those things out loud, it just, you know, you remember the pain, you remember walking through it. It's, it's hard to be so raw and honest with pain. And, and shame. Mm -hmm. It's really hard with both of those things yep. just to be completely honest and open about it. And yeah, so we I hope that it helps people. Vulnerability. Yeah. I, I love that. And I think <clears throat> to go from, <clears throat> because Brad was saying it was a lot of pride to go from yep. that place to now to this place is just like, like Akita said, a testament of God's power. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So like my question though, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, um, so you were saying that like nothing was really wrong, um, but do you feel like, like in hindsight, there was something that maybe you were missing or just like a space? I know it was like gradual mm -hmm. um, things that happen and then like letting your guard <laughs> down and then the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Just coming in because um, that's what he does. Yeah. Um, but, was there something like in hindsight that you were that that happened initially to disconnect you from God? I would say, man, that is a good question. I don't know if I've ever been asked that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think that there was anything that you know point to one thing that was disconnecting my relationship with God, um, because I grew up. I mean, my parents are still married. I grew up in a Christian home. We went to church, you know, when the door was open, we were there. Um, my, my grandfather was a pastor, my aunt, my uncles are pastors, you know, so I grew up in, in church. Um, I remember that all the time. So I think that it's just these little compromises that you allow yourself to, to do, and we still do it. 
um, as humans, you know, just in generality, you know, generally speaking, we still do it. We'll compromise little things here and there. Like, you and, know, you should eat healthy, but you still eat the cake, you know, it's yeah, like those you know, little and, things. Um, not saying that's a sin. No, but it's a compromise. <laughs> but you know, it's, like you know it's these little compromises. And so I think that for me, um, I think it was just lack of focus, really. Like just, I never, I mean, man, I, I don't think I ever really understood how deep and how much I should be studying God's word, how, how much I should be saturating my life with Jesus, with music, with all the things that you do. And I think that it, it wasn't that it wasn't taught to me. It was that I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And I, and I pray this for my kids, but I wish that I had gotten it. So I didn't have a testimony like this. Mm-hmm. I wish that my testimony was like, quote unquote, boring, you know, like grew up in church, like, you know, everything's good. Um, <clears throat> But I think that I compromised my spiritual self along the way because I was so focused on physical. I was focused on um, what I was doing for a living at that time was, I mean, I was instructing a lot of people. I was um, teaching a lot of people things. I was like, I was doing really well in my career. And a lot of that was physical. It was a lot of physical stuff I was doing. And so I'm thinking just focused on all that physical stuff and not really prioritizing my family. Um, like I feel that I had, should have been. We had had a baby not long before that, yeah. which is always a difficult time in yeah. marriages. You have young, young kids and you know, your sex life isn't the same as it used no. to be. There's a lot of um, disrupted sleep. There's a lot of all of those things happening when you, when you have a little one. Yeah. And I think too, you, you talked about isolation, like you were, yeah. um, you know, in hotel rooms a lot. Right. And you know, that, that kind like of isolation. isolation versus um, solitude. And I, I've talked about that a lot to several other guys because, you know, Jesus, you know, went into solitude. Like he went and prayed by himself. He went and did these things, but there was like purpose behind it where I feel like isolation, um, there's no real purpose behind it. It's just like you're shut in and you don't really want to do anything. You get bored and then you start looking for things to do. And it just, it's just not healthy. Um, so I think that, cause I still travel for work, but now it's totally different when I travel. I mean, clearly I have guardrails now up, you know, because I don't ever want to, I don't feel like I'd ever fall back into any of that, but I don't want to even have that temptation, you know, like I want to guard myself against all of that. Um, but I don't think there was ever one instant. I think it was just these small compromises. And then like our marriage was not bad at all. Um, and we had already had, you know, that was our third child that we had. So we had already been through, you know, two other kids, but there was no like big stressors at home that I remember. Um, you know, you know the enemy is, is patient and he yeah. uses every opportunity. And I think that that's exactly what happened with us is just many little fractures that Mm. we didn't see you know it's like you you don't see them until it's all just busted open you know (laughs) that it's like what the heck what's happening you know not realizing that you've had all of these little fractures that were happening and you know you just in any time that we're doing something we shouldn't do we justify it so it's oh yeah like i mean i i justified everything i was doing based on and i should have looked up these scriptures but based on um, basically looking at scripture the wrong way. So, you know, cause I grew up in church and so I would justify this because I had thought of, of the actions. Oh, and yeah. so like that was in my heart. So I was like, well, the I Bible says it. I already did it. So I guess I just do it, you know, and clearly that's not, you know, the yeah. interpret the right interpretation right. of all of that. <laughs> Um, clearly right. <laughs> then it's, you know, it's crazy. Um, but I would, I would for sure 100% say, I don't, I didn't see, I can't see anything in our marriage in that time that would have made someone do like, just walk away. There was no, we weren't fighting. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I think it truly was all these small compromises and, not being grounded, not being rooted, not being, you know, 
now like I do devotions on a daily basis. Like I want to dive into scripture more. I want to learn all this stuff. And my kids, you know, a lot of people think I'm a little crazy with like music, but like I want to listen to Christian music. Um, and because I feel like I still hear like the other songs, like it's fine. It still jams to the nineties. Yeah. Nineties music is amazing. <laughs> like, yes, yes. Right. <laughs> Um, but I just want to saturate my life and surround my life with, with Jesus. I want to, I just want to keep doing that. Cause I know everyone can slip and you can trip and you will, you will trip up. That's we're human. We, we can't be perfect, but, um, I want to guard against as much as I can. I and, will say thinking about it, I, I would say one thing that was probably missing from our marriage at that time, looking back at it was we did have three young kids. We were not making it a priority to go out true. with one another. We, yep. we were just kind of surviving yep. as far as, you know, getting a sitter and all those things was just another complication. And especially when you're, when you have a real little one, it's not even so much an option, right. To, to get a sitter. And, and so I would say, we definitely were very focused on being parents, but I wouldn't say we were very focused on being married. Yeah. If that makes sense, you yeah. know, in investing in our relationship with each other. I like that it wasn't necessarily one thing because I think that that is how life works. And I think that, mm -hmm. like you said, the enemy is very patient and cunning mm -hmm. and he just sows like little seeds. And it just, and I understand what you're saying about you know, now just wanting to be listening to devotionals and wanting to listen to worship music because mm -hmm. it really shifts where your thinking is. Which yeah. We always say mm -hmm. which shifts how you feel mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. ends up determining how you behave. And yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I think it's so important because that's how like that's how it happens. I yeah. don't think a lot of they, stuff is not just like yeah. Right the the and enemy and doesn't come out you know all flamboyant and say have all these lights yeah. on and say hey yeah you know I am yeah you know exactly you know you you brought up about wanting to eat healthy and that's exact that's a great representation mm -hmm. because you can want to have intentions of eating healthy but then you have a cookie for a breakfast yeah and mm -hmm. that cookie turns into a burger. Yep. And that burger yep. turns into a bag of chips. and Because you already took a bite. You already did it. Exactly. Right. Might as well finish the bag. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can't eat just one. So. No, yeah. no, you can't. You really can't. <laughs> but I think that's oh, a great um, depiction. And that's why, you know, we have to, wherever on the spectrum we're, we're at, whether we think we've made it or whether we're struggling, we all have to be intentional. You know, because mm -hmm. any one of us can slip up. You know? Yes. Yeah. So, and it yeah. definitely yeah. becomes, I think, a heart thing too, because when your when your mind is in a different space, it impacts your heart. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then, and then I think you know it starts making like calluses and like nope. you know, walls, yeah. and then mm -hmm. then more things can come in because you have like this these walls built around. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I have another question. Uh, yes. <laughs> <Lisa though. laughs> So um, can you tell us about like how you found out and like what what that experience was like for you? Oh, gosh. <laughs> These are interesting questions. I've never had anyone ask us before. I, I segue before you say before you share that we, we're a blended family, but I am divorced. Um, and I had infidelity in my last marriage. So like a lot of things that that you're saying, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> right. That's where I get right. my from. So <laughs> uh, it really all came out actually just via um a an I would say an opportune text message that was sent. Mm -hmm. And then um you ever just have those moments where you're just like you know something isn't right. And that was it really just was like I need to go look at the phone bell. And yeah. and and it like like all of a sudden just you know, you just remember exactly where you were, what was going on. And so that was kind of how that all ended up coming out was, was through that process. And then it was honestly, um, it was a process of truth being revealed. Oh, and yeah. I, and I remember being very almost angry at God about that because I just felt like, well, it can't get any worse. And then it would get worse and then it would get worse. Mm -hmm. And I can look back at it now and just see God's mercy over me so that he didn't give it to me all at once. Cause I just could not have handled that full, full yeah. breadth of knowledge at that time. It was like, I, I, 
needed him to sustain me through each moment. Mm -hmm. And so when all the truth and all these things came out, and then I also had to come to a place of recognizing I didn't need to know it all. And that is a whole other side of things, right? Because I'm sure you understand this as women. I want to know everything. I want to see every text message. I want to see every email. I want to see every picture. I want to see it all. And I felt like that would make me feel better. Even though recognizing that every single thing you see, well, guess what? You can't unsee that. You can't unread that. You can't. And, and getting to a place of knowing that if we were ever going to move forward, then I had to be okay with closing that door Mm. and, and recognizing that there was this, restart point that we had and I had to to say that this is where we're starting again and then I couldn't take everything that happened before and put it after that point and that is not easy and if there's anyone facing that right now (laughs) you're gonna have times when you go back before that Mm -hmm. starting point over and over and just like exactly like you said that battle in your mind I mean this is where it's all won and lost right where what am I thinking what are my fears? What are my insecurities? Um, you know, what, there were times, man, I would just flip out on Brad and just like, and he's like, what just happened? Like, I thought we were doing good. And I'm like, we are not good. (laughs) And so recognizing that he had to give me some restarts. I had to do the same for him. It is a constant process of moving forward. If you're in the, the space of saying, can we possibly recover? Can we possibly, you know, Mm -hmm. actually reconcile after something huge? It doesn't even have to be an affair, right? A a breach of trust in anything is huge in a marriage. And if you're wondering, can we get past this? It's yes, you can, you can, you you can do that. It's, but not just by you. (laughs) And, and so I would just say that it, I learned that I couldn't, I, I didn't feel like I could trust Brad for a long time, but I knew who I could trust. So it was just that constant process of saying like, I trusted God to get me through and facing where it was like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I could lose my marriage. Okay. Well, I was already there. (laughs) (laughs) I know that that sounds really weird, but just it, it enabled me to take some really drastic faith steps of saying like, well, what's the worst that could happen? I could lose my marriage. Okay. Well, that's, that was already on the table, Mm -hmm. you know? So recognizing that I was at a fork in the road where I, I could, I could choose to take this one road that I didn't know what God could do in that circumstance and, and allowing him to move in a way that only who he could. And Brad had to be at that place too. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, you know, as a woman or as a man, if you're listening to this and like, well, I'm there, I'm ready. Right. And you know, your spouse is like, completely off the rails. Yeah. Like, no, Brad had, Brad had to go through where God was doing a work in him. So it has to be both of you two being willing to surrender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's a, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I think it's, <laughs> just, it's so brave. I, I think it just, it's just so brave because it is, it is hard to be honest and to be truthful and to mm-hmm. be vulnerable. Yeah. 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 I just think it's, it shows such bravery in you guys willing being willing to do that and even trusting god you know to do it when you couldn't and i think it's just amazing to see the grace of god over both of you you know just kind of how you were able to work through you were going through and you lisa how god gave you the different uh pieces of information in increments you know Mm -hmm. that's you know grace of god there Yeah. yeah and um i wanted to say too that as far as your healing process because i know that you prayed i know that you were believing God through this whole process, but what are some other things that um, you guys did or who did you talk to or how did you work through to, to that healing process? Mm. <laughs> I almost wish that it's, yeah. it's funny. I feel like when you're in such pain, it's hard to reach out sometimes. Yeah. It's like you, you don't go to the resources that you probably should go to. You don't um, talk to the people you probably should mm-hmm. talk to because it's like, you're so cocooned in kind of this this pain and trying to walk through it and and navigate it in a really healthy way i think you can look back and say (laughs) these are the things i I should have done done and i don't think you know we moved almost immediately after brad came home so that's like a whole nother yeah yeah Yeah, no it is it it was like a huge a life restart really that's that's what happened and i wouldn't advocate that because yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say that. it was, you know, there's a lot of stressors in that 
alone. But I do really, truly believe that that was a God yeah. um, moment for us uh, because so real quick going back, like I was, I called Lisa um, to start, you know, to see if this is even salvageable. Um, I was driving back from another weekend of just doing whatever I wanted. And um, I think it was, a, was it a Sunday or so, I don't oh, even know. I, well, it was on a weekend. That's it was on a weekend. I, week, it was yeah. on a I can't remember. Anyway, so I was driving back and um, just minding my own business driving. And I did have like this, I had this road to Damascus like moment, um, not as, not as crazy as like the Bible's road to Damascus, you know, it wasn't this bright light that blinded me, but, um, you know, God, I think there was a crossroads right at that moment in my life. And, um, God spoke to me and, he, and you know, not audibly, I'm not, you know, it's nothing like that, but I knew that it was him. And he was basically saying like, this is it, this is it. You can keep going the way you're going. Um, but you're, you're going to lose everything. Um, and not just your family. Like I felt like deep inside, like it was, it was life or death. It was like a, a true crossroads. And, um, but it wasn't this, it was dire, but at the same time, it was like, God's like, I'm right here. Like, you don't have to do this. I'm right here. And so like, I broke down and cried. Uh, um, I called Lisa and asked her like, you know, is there any way, like, can we work this out? And then that, started the long process of eventually moving back in the house. Um, you know, incrementally, even through that, like revealing truths mm -hmm. that I, I thought like, no, I don't want to say anything. Let me just, let's just push on me you know? saying, why God, just let me go. I yeah. don't even want to be in this anymore. I don't want to do this. And so when people want to think like, they hear our story and they want to think it's all magically better in a no. moment, right? He had this road to Damascus experience. He yeah. hears from God and then boom, he's a Everything's new man, good. right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's not the way that it worked. No. And instead we had to continue to walk through the pain and, the, and detoxing. And I would say, you know, for anyone listening, we got connected into a church almost immediately. That's what I was going to say. When we got here and that was huge. So we uprooted, um, moved down to El Paso. We're in El Paso now, moved down to El Paso, Texas. And I mean, started everything anew. Like we sold all our furniture, bought new furniture. We made like, some, some. We bad made financial, financial like, like <laughs> not good financial decisions you, um, at all. Exactly. Could tell I was in bad emotional yeah. place. I'm like, yes, get it, just, get it. Just buy it out whatever. Here. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but you know, Lisa had found the church that we still attend. They found the church on online or like on Google maps yeah. or something. And so we end up going and I just fell in love with during worship service. I was just like, this is amazing. Um, and you know, just broke down and cried during worship service. Um, it was just an amazing time. So we we're like, we need to sit down and talk to the pastor. Um, because I think, you know, even where we went to school together and all this, it's more of like, you don't want to show everything. You know, like it's kind of like the old mentality of church. It's like everyone's perfect. Yeah. You know, you go you to church. Go and put on your everyone's best perfect. To be perfect. Like no one's <laughs> doing anything bad. Everybody's good. Um, and that's not how this church was. It was like you're broken. Get in here, and you know, let's go through this. And so we met with the pastor, and um, I just told him everything like right away. I was like, here's the deal, and I just laid it out. And I just kind of sat there and cried like, yeah. through, through most of it. Just yeah, like, yeah, yeah um, just like I'm so broken. And I don't, yeah. I don't even know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do right now in this, you know, how do you, how do you forgive? How do we, how do we do this? How do we have a sex life again? How do yeah. you do all Everything. of the things, right? That, that you, you just feel so very vulnerable and vulnerable is hard. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, you feel like you can just be hurt again over and over and over again. And sometimes you are, and that's, it's okay. Well, that's a I mean, whole it's, other it's thing. part of the process. It I is think. part of the process. And so he really guided us, um, you know, sometimes like, you know, face to face and sometimes just being our pastor, you know, just being that support element and the church was our support element. And that really guided us along. Um, I would, what, well, I was just going to say something that I, I think was so pivotal in our journey yeah. in that moment was meeting with him and him 
speaking life into your yeah. dad's future. Yeah. So it was, it was like, you are you don't have to be, he defined. just met us. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to be defined by what you had, what you had done, but he could see it, what mm -hmm. he could do in the future. Like at this moment, him changing the course of his life, that there was hope for that. Like he wasn't yeah. just this scorned person who could never step into anything ever again. You know, it's like, okay, you're the, you're the one that we can never put into leadership. You're the one yeah. that we can, you know, I mean, it was, it wasn't that it was just like, okay, that's who you were, but who are you going to be? Yep. And, and that was just so powerful, even for me to hear that. Yeah. I, I could start to see like, who could Brad become? Not who he was, not, not wanting what this man was before the affair or even, you know, this idea that I had in my mind, but what was God doing for his future? Yeah. And then that whole surrendering thing again and again and again. Right? And I think that, you know, I, we've never been asked that question really directly. And now that I think more about it, like, I don't know if the place that I was in, if counseling would have, I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't have helped, but I don't know if I would have been open, yeah. you know, like to be honest, I, I really don't know if I would have been open to that because I advocate like, you know, get counseling, get counseling you know, get, you know, I advocate like, Hey, go to a Christian counselor, like talk about marriage, like get into this. I think uniquely, maybe even for us, like it was our church um because it was a church we had never gone to before you know that environment and i think that that really pushes and then yeah him is speaking life over me after i just like threw up our whole testimony on him, you know <laughs> and we're still in the middle of healing you know it's still fresh um that was part of it um, too is i think our willingness to say that <laughs> you yeah, know, like yeah. if people want to, they expect kind of the local church to step in and be this, this thing for them without ever really being honest about who they are, where, or where they are, the situation they're facing in that moment. It's like, well, my church isn't feeding me. My church isn't doing this. And it's like, well, are you even really <laughs> revealing yeah. who you are, you know, and recognizing that and allowing someone to come alongside you or seeking mentorship or finding a group or, you know, I mean, there comes a point where we have to be responsible for our own decisions and our process and no and i think she hit on the head so like i think our true healing has just been really finished you know in this season you know in this of what happened i think it really truly just finished you know maybe a couple years ago yeah um because i still felt a lot and of we're shame almost 10 years past, past this, this affair yeah. so this was in 2011 yeah um, that this happened. Um, we celebrated our 10th anniversary a few weeks afterwards. I found out we're almost about to celebrate our 20th in yeah. June. Yeah. So, you know, just when I say that it's a process, people need to know that it's not it's, quick, but it, it can happen and, and it's, it's worth it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I think like, I'm, I would specifically for me, I think it was in the past couple of years when I finally was able to let the shame of it go away mm -hmm. and, and i think that process was you know jesus working in my life but also him giving me the strength to speak it to like here's the deal you know here, here's what i did here's how i'm not trying to do that again here's what i'm doing to you know put a priority um of my family you know and and you know prioritizing my wife over my kids you know as crazy as that that concept is to a lot of people we, we know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, <with> you. <laughs> you yeah. know and so i mean because i think there was at one point i don't know if we were arguing or if i was just talking to lisa about it but i was like yeah i look in the mirror and there was times not anymore but there was times where i just felt this shame you you um, told me in that moment you said and you we had been in a fight yeah and he said you have no idea what i see when i look in the mirror and I was just like, and it was like, it hit me yeah. in that moment. Cause part of me wanted him to see that yeah. in the mirror. And you know, a part of me wanted him to just stay in shame. Like I wanted him to like feel the, just yeah. everything he had done and hurt me and to have an understanding of how deeply he cut me, you know? And mm -hmm. so then it was like, and then I was just like, Oh my, that is not a very Christian thing to feel. And then, you know, so I started praying from that day forward that mm -hmm. he would stop 
when he looked in the mirror, he would not see what he had done, but he would see what God had done for him. Yeah. And I started mm-hmm. praying that like every day. And it, it wasn't an overnight thing no. for him either. But there came a point where that. But there changed. was a point where I was praying and it was, you know, I'm praying to like these raw prayers. You know, there were different raw prayers than Lisa, but they were raw prayers where it was like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I know you forgive me, but I'm sorry. Like, I can't believe I did this. And um, it was that point of God really putting it on my heart and saying, like, stop looking at the scars that you gave Lisa. Stop looking at the scars that your kids have. Stop looking at the scars you have. Don't look at them as things that I did, but look at that God healed. Yeah. Mm. That was a pivotal point in wow. letting go of my shame and understanding that the scars don't go away. They're there. They're there for life. Mm. Um, but it's the perspective of looking at them. You know, I could always think like I gave these scars to Lisa, but now my perspective through God has changed where it's like, God's like, no, 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 you might have done that, but l- those feel- scars are me healing. And look what we've done, you know, look what he's done through all this. Yeah. And so that was a huge part of, of the, our healing process, I think. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that's great. And I, I think it's amazing, both Brad and Lisa, just how you guys are so honest and so real about how you handled it and how that, you know, it wasn't overnight. Like you were still, mm-hmm. you know, working through things. You may have still had some resentment, but, you know, that's what, that's what people go through, you know, and people yeah. do try to hide it and just show their good side and show the Instagram self. <laughs> yeah. the Everything's fine. Everything, you know, yeah. nothing is wrong, but yeah. this is so powerful. You know, even the moment you had Lisa, where you were like, I, I kind of want him to sit in this shame, you know, yeah. that's a real feeling. That's what people actually go through. So yeah. I just think that's, yeah, that's I so love, powerful. And I think what you were saying before, it doesn't necessarily have to be infidelity. It could be other things mm-hmm. that yeah. the marriage and, I love that what the pastor gave you was hope. Yeah. Yeah. And like sometimes you can be in such a, a dark or a dim situation where you can't you like you don't see the hope. Yeah. And mm. so I love that. And then the when you were talking about like counseling, we're advocates for counseling. We mm-hmm. go to counseling. Yeah. Um, yeah. but there's also like a, a spiritual component and it mm-hmm. and it seemed like there was a spiritual healing that needed to take place. Yes. And, and that's why, and, and, and um, also to say that like, um, you know, you can go to a professional counselor, but the church also, yeah. like, you mm-hmm. know, people are there to help you. It's yeah. supposed to be the and, hospital. You know, yeah. And, yeah. You museum, and not the yeah. museum, you know, right. and truth be told, you know, God will work however he wants to work. Yeah. yeah. So um, if, if it wants to be through a counselor, fine. If it wants to be through a preacher, if it mm-hmm. wants to be through a donkey, you know, or or somebody, exactly. you, know exactly. yeah. you know, however he wants to heal, he's going to do yeah. it his way. Yeah. So I think mm-hmm. it's just great to hear your guys story that it doesn't, it's not always a cookie cutter no. to where, where you head to, you yeah. know, and but I there love is still hope. Yeah. That oh, is thank my, you guys. my complete soul right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you guys are like, yeah. Yeah, we got to get notes and everything. (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, clearly like that pain and it's, it's so Uh, hard when you're in that to, to feel hope. It really is. And you know, whether your story ends up where, where we are, where you have restoration in your current marriage or whether you end up walking through healing in a different way and God uses that story in a different way. I just think, you know, no matter what you have to walk through healing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, and it's, So that's what it's just constantly like, you know, God kind of took me on my own journey of healing before Mm -hmm. he brought us together and, and we could walk through that, but it's no matter what I had to heal. And it was, it was recognizing, like I, I was getting divorced. That was, I really came to the realization like this, my marriage was lost, you know, and that was, that was the way it was going to be. And I could choose, you know, there's that saying you get bitter or get better. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I could feel myself like, those bitter seeds <laughs> planted, no. they were planted, <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, either, either yeah. I'm going to water these seeds and yeah. they're going to grow real fast yep. or I've got to choose to forgive. And I had to do it for me. And it wasn't because what he had stopped, what he was doing. It wasn't because he had asked me for forgiveness. It was because I knew 
I had to do that regardless of what he was doing for me. Yeah. I had to have that healing take place because I couldn't let it control me anymore. Yeah. Okay. What was that last part that you were saying about healing? Oh, I was just saying that no matter what, you have to walk through the healing. Yeah. So it, it whatever your end result is, you you don't know what that is. But you can't wait really for the end result to say like, okay, I want to get healed now. It, it's a process that you have to walk through. And so I did have to say boldly like, okay, I'm going to forgive mm -hmm. and I'm not going to get bitter. And I can't be just discouraged about everything. Like I have to change my perspective. There were just this process that God just came in and I did not do this perfectly. I was like David in the Psalms, you know, where it's like, <laughs> Oh, woe is me. Are you ever going to listen to me? You know? And then it's like, okay, like let's remember who he really is yeah, and yeah. that he's in control. And I mean, I wrote five journals during this whole time and, and in this one year, right? Like I wrote these five journals and it was like real and honest and me. I mean, there were times I literally was like, well, what are you going to do now, God? Like, I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like I was that kind of, yeah. that's how authentic my relationship was with him during this time that I was just like, okay, you, you say you're going to do this. Okay. Okay. And yeah. I would, I mean, like challenging him, questioning him. I was angry with him. I did all of those things, but I always came back to who he was and yeah. it, at the end of the, that time. I was like, okay, but no, he's in control. He has a plan. He, it is bigger than what I can see. You know, he has me, he sustains me. So I would say to anyone who's going yeah. through those things, like that thought process will change your life, mm -hmm. right? It, it, what you put in here, what you put in your brain will change your life. Just like you said. So, um, if you just accept the lies that the enemy wants to give you, then there you go. Yeah. You can, you can go down that road. Yeah. If you begin to plant God's word in your mind, it does turn to action. It does transform your life. And so, um, I got real intentional about knowing God's truth so that I would be able to recognize mm. the lies of the enemy. Cause the enemy was really trying to get me to believe a lot of things during that time. <laughs> yeah. Your, your handle is unrelenting pursuit. Yes. Right. Unrelenting pursuit underscore Understood. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we get it right? <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you guys go follow them, but tell us where did you get that name from? Uh, oh, this is kind of an interesting yeah, story actually. Is. Are you Am I telling? I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, the, it kind of actually came from, you know, we're in the process of kind of taking really big faith steps yeah. in our life. And so our story, you know, I don't know who your audience is as far as where their faith walk is, but yeah. our story um, is very faith filled. We, it would not be, it would There's not no be what way. it is yeah, I don't think so. without God. Mm. And so we have kind of just been in this process in this past year of just kind of surrendering our story, if that makes sense. And saying like, we're going to just let God do whatever he wants to do mm -hmm. with this really broken story that we have that is a miracle. And so we want to be a vessel where we mm -hmm. can just breathe hope into hopeless places, right? Because every marriage faces some aspect of feeling hopeless. Yep. And so we really wanted to start letting people know that there could be hope there. And Brad actually came home one day and he is just like all fired up. Like we are going to write a book. We're going to do a podcast. We're going to do this. Blah, blah. And I'm just like, <laughs> we're going to do everything. Yeah. Right. This is, which is not like him. No. I'm, I'm more of the person who's like, Oh, let's try this thing or let's do this little idea. And so I just mm -hmm. did not react like, uh, like someone should. And I just kind of gave him this dumbfounded expression. Didn't even explain to him. No you know, kind of how God had been working in my own life during this process. And he's like, and God even gave me a name. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't feel like I was preaching to you though. Uh, like you're making it sound like I was like, like yes, like, like all fired slamming up. the pulpit. No. Listen, he uh, came uh, in just <laughs> like, this is, this, this is what's going on. And like, he was fired up and I, yeah. I just, she blew me off. I really kind of blew him off because yeah. it was petrifying for me to think that I'm, I guess I'd actually have to start doing what I said that I would do, <laughs> if that makes sense. So yeah. like when, if God lays something on your heart and you just kind of feel like you're in this waiting season and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I guess I have to go from waiting to doing. And I don't know, it was really petrifying yeah. for me to think that that's where we were at. Cause I knew if he was coming to me with that, <laughs> it was like this, like God smack for me, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, okay, you're going to start doing some things. And quite honestly, 
I just like to be comfortable. I like <laughs> to do the things that I know. Yeah. And so it was yeah. difficult. No, all and that's that, all that to say that Brad came up with the name. <laughs> well, yeah, it was, it just, um, I thought it, I mean, I was praying about it and I was searching a lot during this whole time before we really started, you know, kicking everything off. And, um, I knew we should be writing a book. I felt the tug the whole time. I knew we should be doing something. And, um, so while I was praying one time, I just felt that, that name, that handle, um, you know, came to my mind. Not with the underscore though. Not with the underscore. Cause I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an IG dude. Like I don't really get all that stuff. So it was just unrelenting pursuit, but I thought it did capture exactly what a marriage should be. Um, you know, striving to have that marriage with God is a priority and it's just, it's a never ending thing. So. You know, I love, I love that. What I love um, about what Lisa was saying was that um, so honest and transparent about how you just, you want to stay comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. I don't mess up stuff. Like we just, <laughs> yeah. settle, like why we have to move mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. yep. territories. So I, I love that. Yeah. And that is the complete definition of faith is stepping out of that comfort zone. Yeah. You know, nowhere in faith did you see the person stepping into something that they were used to or comfortable yeah. with. Or even knew what was happening. So <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> Brad's, Brad's favorite thing is to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So yeah. that's kind of where where no. we are at now. Just like preach, okay, Brad, preach. I, we're uncomfortable. Right? Like, what's right. going on here? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh Great. gosh. So we have no, some man. random uh fast questions that we want to ask you guys. All, All right. right. Let's do I this. <laughs> segment yeah and we did not go yeah. over this with them guys so this is all no, no this no. is yeah this is real all right <laughs> i'm gonna give you starting to get nervous um i'm gonna give you two choices and then you just tell me which one is you right okay and so eat out or eat in out yeah out, out. for sure <laughs> For sure. I mean, it's like, you, you know, you don't, I like to, to cook, but yeah. I think uh, when you just, you get out, there's a whole new uh, element of yeah. trying new food. And, and then we have like our spots that date oh, night, yeah. like we're going, you know, so yeah. So the next one is save or spend. Mm. I'm going to let you spend. <laughs> I'm the spender. He is. Oh, hence the, spender. the microphones. And we were discussing this previously. <laughs> yes. He's a spender. I would say that I lean more towards being the saver, yeah. but I'm kind of a little in between. I think I've changed a little bit because if anyone watching, it is hard to always be a no person. Mm. It yeah. is hard to be a no person all the time. It really is. Like you feel like the buzz kill. But I don't make you feel like that. Like Okay. He gets this look like a little puppy dog. Yeah. And then it just makes me feel so bad. It's just like, oh yeah, I know. But we need it because if yeah. We'd be in a poor back. house if this one was in control. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be bad. Action or romance movies? Action. Oh, yeah, I mean, action. Are you really questioning on that one? No, like you. I no, didn't know. this is you. I thought it was no, for no, both of us. Not, no, this is you talking about you. Oh, I thought it was for her, too. No, no, you, no you she answers own... for her, and you, you answer. Oh, yeah. That's why I was like, baby, yeah. you want to watch a romance No, movie? no, but you... I thought, anyway, no, <laughs> action. action all yeah, day. I am action, but not like, it's not all the time. Okay. When like the, suspense too. When is the last bit? time that we watched a romance movie? Yeah, it's. <laughs> he has, he has ruined every romance movie I've ever tried to watch. So I know. Uh, well, uh, in the nineties, romance movies were all the same. Come on. They were. The True. notebook. I can't even think of all the others. They all were like boom, boom, it's boom. So yeah. yes, yes. Introvert or extrovert? Oh, we just talked about this. Yeah. So I am We would classify him. Yeah. I'm an introverted extrovert. If that makes any sense. Thank you. That yeah. Does that make sense? Good. That is not That's him. I've been saying that for the past no, few I've been saying that no. I am an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Yeah. yeah. I would say yeah, that yeah. that's him completely. Yeah. You are an extrovert. No. 
I, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I would say that I'm more on the extrovert side, but I definitely do still need like my solitude. And, and so I, yeah. I definitely know that if I have pushed too much, um, you know, been around too many mm. people for too long, like it's a problem. Like I need to, I need to have my space too. So maybe we're both introverted extroverts. Probably like there's times <laughs> where like, I just don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> Here's the difference between my husband and I. I can fake it till I make it in those situations. This one, no, uh, he gets a I face, try. That's it. I try that's to. It. He's like, I'm like, done with people. You out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Same. Like, I'm done. I'm, yes. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> okay, this is the last one. This one uh, has three options. Mm. Audible, actual book, or podcast. Oh, mm, man, that's changed in my life a little bit because I'm huge. an actual book girl. Like I want to sit down with my highlighter, my pen. I want to, you know, just all over yeah. and, and I also just for fun, like a good book, but I definitely have taken to listening to podcasts way more just because I can pop that little AirPod in my ear and I can go and yeah. do whatever I need to do. So I think it just has been a season where that's been more accessible for me to do that. Yeah, I think that book, physical book, when, if there's like a book, like we, I just recently bought a new book. I haven't opened it yet, which is bad, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the, I like the actual book to open the book up. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I listen to podcasts, but like preferred, I would do book, Yeah, which has changed. That's a huge change. So that like, if there's change. people that see this, that know me. That's a huge change. Like, I read now. Yeah, I read. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. I thought you guys were going to say podcast because you have your own podcast. <laughs> you would think. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like picking, yeah. like listening to a bunch of podcasts to get ideas. I listen to podcasts every day. She, like, listen I'll see her little AirPod in her ear and she's running around the house doing whatever. Yeah. That's, I'm a multitasker. Yeah. Thank you, thank you guys so much for, for sharing. Oh, that thank you guys. This has been, it's been good. Yeah. It's we, been awesome. we do pray thank you that so much. If there's anybody out yeah. there that does feel hopeless, we just pray that right now, they that whether it. your marriage just feels like it's crumbling or just mm. personally that God is always a redeemer of our broken places. So absolutely. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. This is definitely <laughs> a, a chain breaker uh, episode. This it is, is, is going to break a it lot is. of chains. So um yeah great definitely so before we let you guys go i want you to please tell our viewers <laughs> how can they reach you what do you got going on when is the movie coming out <laughs> all of that stuff <laughs> That's a, that is a problem yeah. for the future. Yeah. So you can get a hold of us on social media, <laughs> Unrelenting Pursuit underscore yep. um, Facebook. It's just Unrelenting Pursuit. And like I said, you can go to our podcast, Unrelenting Pursuit, on Apple, Spotify. We haven't on made the YouTube uh, journey. No, yet. we haven't done YouTube, but <laughs> but we're um, talking about it. Um, yeah, every Wednesday we push out a new episode. Yep. And uh, so, and it's, and for anyone that hasn't listened to them, they're just, they're very, um, chill, just like this, just very chill. And we just kind of want it to be like someone sitting there at the table with us drinking some coffee and just talking. And so that's kind of where we go unedited. Yeah. So, which is always interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, so, you guys go follow Unrelenting Pursuit underscore. Make sure you get it right. Um, <laughs> check them out. Listen to their podcast every Wednesday. They are definitely going to bless you and show them some love, you know. Drop a comment, do a share, something to let them know that you <laughs> miss them. So thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. We appreciate it, it guys. Thank you.